A year after its release, the iPad Air 3 is quickly becoming one of the people's favorite tablet because of its versatility. It's almost as if you have an iPad Pro, and here's why. Hi guys, Remy here again, and today, we'll revisit the year-old iPad Air 3 and how it stacks in 2020. Moreover, we found out why it's almost like the iPad Pro, but half its price. We'll first take a quick look at its specs and our thoughts on the iPad Air 3. But before that, please subscribe to the channel if you like tech videos and click the notification bell button to update you whenever new videos on this channel comes out. So going back, the iPad Air 3 came out in March of 2019 last year. It is the third generation of the iPad Airs. For its build and body, it has a glass front which is scratch resistant and has only phobic coating for better protection against minimal hairline scratches. After almost 3 months of using this, it still feels brand new and I've never noticed any hairline scratches which is good news for me and for others who likes to keep their iPads in mint condition. The iPad Air 3 is available in 3 colors, namely space gray, silver, and gold. I personally pick the silver since I deem it most suitable for most cases. But you'll never go wrong with any of the three colors since Apple is known to produce excellent build quality and is perfect for any case you throw at it. Its dimensions are 250.6 by 174.1 mm and has a thickness of 6.1 mm. It weighs approximately 456 grams which is one of the lightest iPad of its size. Its weight coupled with its thickness makes this iPad a very handy one which enables you to bring it anywhere with ease. And also one thing that people don't notice is having a light iPad enables you to hold it longer without an ease and discomfort, which is really ideal when you need to carry it while using it. Its build is identical to the iPad Pro 2017, the 10.5 inch, which gives you the classic iPad look. So for people who want a variety of cases and covers, you'll have an easy time finding tons of cases because you can fit cases from the iPad Pro 10.5 of 2017. That's another benefit to this model. You also have a SIM card or cellular capability, which I find unnecessary, but there may be people who need this feature and it's better to have this option for a wide variety of consumer preferences. And as usual, it doesn't have a memory card slot, but ever since, I have never had a problem with its storage because backing up files on the iCloud is always seamless and a breeze. You only need a stable and fast internet connection. On the bottom, you have a loudspeaker. What can I say after months of media consumption is that the speakers are nothing short of amazing. A lot of times, watching videos tend to get spoiled by poor audio and speaker quality. But amazingly, this iPad works like a true tablet, capable of bringing high quality, loud, yet crisp and detailed sound. Oh, somebody's getting a little fussy. You're damn right I am. Lastly, for the body, it has a classic 3.5mm headphone jack. This comes in handy when I want to watch or listen to something but do not want surrounding people to listen or get disturbed. Also, according to a lot of reviewers and I myself personally, the quality of wired earphones are simply miles better than Bluetooth headphones, especially when you're using Apple headphones or any high-quality audio headphones. So having the headphone jack is a big bonus for the iPad Air 3. Next, we now proceed to its display. It has a 10.5 inch IPS LCD display and a resolution of 2224 by 1668 display and a 265 ppi or pixels per inch with true tone. What this means is its display is amazing. Although for some hardcore specs people, the display may be just average. For the regular and casual consumers like me, this display translates in real life as a display worth your time watching. Looking at it simply gives you the impression of elegance and precision, showing every detail crisply and vividly thanks to its true tone display. Additionally, its new DCI-P3 wide color gamut needs better colors, far more accurate, and punchy greens and reds, which is great as iPads are widely used for media consumption, casual gaming, and presentation. But a downside of its display is the aspect ratio. It still has the 4 by 3 aspect ratio. So when watching videos, you still get the black bars on top and bottom of the screen. But nevertheless, your viewing experience will be great as I personally watch countless videos and media with this one and not a single moment have I not enjoyed it. Next, we now go to the inside or the internal specs. For the battery, it packs an 8134 mAh battery, which in paper translates to 10 hours of multimedia use. 
personally I can confirm this as my daily usage hovers around 9 to 10 hours of screen on time on light to moderate use. But when I play heavy games or use memory extensive applications, the screen time would fall around 8 hours but nevertheless still great. One thing I want to share for people who are not aware, using the iPad in a cool and well-ventilated room allowing you to preserve more battery as the iPad is cooler. This is because when it is hot, it tends to drain more battery or throttles the performance to lessen the heat impact. Lastly, regarding the battery, never allow it to be extremely hot as it can definitely damage and lessen the battery charge significantly. Next for the internals is its chipset. It runs in an A12 7 nanometer bionic chip. As of the making of this video, it is a generation older since the latest is the A13, but I confidently use any apps without lags and freezes. Apple chipsets are simply one of the best out there, and it can be seen in the benchmark ratings. It scores 4,824 in Geekbench for single core and 11,448 for multi core tests. But for the average consumers, in simple terms, the day to day usage is lightning fast and can handle practically any application out there. It also has a hexa core CPU and 4 core graphics, which is excellent for heavy games. For its memory, it has a 3GB RAM, which is enough because Apple products in general are well optimized and doesn't require a lot of RAM to use applications. Lastly, for the internal is storage, it has a base storage of 64GB and you can bump it up to 256GB depending on your preference. Again, I chose the base storage because storage hasn't been an issue since I can easily back up my files on the cloud. But other people might want to consider having the higher storage if they need tons of applications and files that needs to be in the iPad in a single time. So now we proceed to the camera. It has 8 megapixel rear camera with f2.4 aperture and HDR capabilities. It can record 1080p videos at 30 frames per second. For its front facing camera, it has a 7 megapixel with f2.2 aperture and same video capability. Both cameras are decent but far from the industry standards in flagship phones but then again, taking pictures on an iPad is rarely a thing. I personally seldom use the cameras only when I need a quick snap or to scan important documents. Either way, it's great to have a decent camera since it assures me that when the occasion needs me to snap a photo, I have a camera on the iPad that's decent and reliable, not the greatest but definitely more than okay. Lastly are the other features found in the iPad Air 3. It has the classic fingerprint sensor which I truly love since I find it faster to open devices with fingerprint rather than face ID as I do not need to lift the device to unlock. Next feature is Apple Pencil support. I don't have an Apple Pencil since I don't see myself using it often, but to use this iPad for note-taking and writing, it's a good feature to have. But take note that you can only use the first generation Apple Pencil on the iPad 3 and is not compatible with the second generation. Next feature that I really like is the smart connector that enables you to connect the smart keyboard and flip cases. I love this feature because other tablets having magnetic connectors doesn't seem to hold tightly but with this smart connector, your connected accessories hold firmly and you'll not worry if it's falling. Last and certainly not the least feature is true multitasking. This is what I love about iPad because they can perform true multitasking by opening multiple windows at a time. This feature is important because a lot of times I need to do tasks on my iPad all at once or sometimes I feel the need to open another tab for medium. This is great because of its hexa-core GPU, 4-core GPU, and 3 gigs of RAM enables you to do multitasking with a breeze. So now we'll talk about its price. The iPad Air 3 is priced at $499 in the US for the 64 gig base version. For the 256 gig, it is priced at $649. These are all the Wi-Fi only version. If you want the cellular version, you'll pay $629 for the 64 gigs and the $779 for the 256 gig model. Do take note that the prices greatly differ, so check on your local Apple store for better actual prices. Now that we are done with the specs, now are my thoughts on the iPad Air 3. The iPad Air 3 is not for everyone, but certainly for a lot of people. For me and for regular consumers that needs a tablet for media consumption, light gaming, work, and presentation, and simple to moderate tasks, this iPad Air is more than enough. Additionally, it performs almost like the iPad Pro with its specs, features, functionality, and even has an Apple Pencil capabilities, enabling you to use certain apps that you would normally think that only the Pro version is capable to handle, like video editing. All these for a price of less than half the iPad Pro. 
Essentially, you get 80 to 90% of the capabilities of the iPad Pro but with more than half its price, which for me is a great deal. A lot of times I think the latest and greatest is always the best, but in hindsight, when you factor in the value of your money to what you get, or what others call bang for the buck, then this iPad Air 3 is the way to go. Buying this in 2020 is a great deal and you will never go wrong with this device. This is perfect for students with its Apple Pencil capabilities, media junkie that want high quality display and audio, professionals who need a device for their PowerPoint presentation or the like, and for the average consumers that simply want a great deal for their money, something capable to perform to almost all the tasks and would last you for years. So that is my revisit and review of the iPad Air 2. Hope you guys like it and for any comments and suggestions, simply write them below and I would very much happy to answer them. And also, what are your thoughts on this iPad? Write them down below and let's have a conversation. Thank you so much guys and see you on my next video.